Welcome to another Nitro Tech review. This is the Garmin Asus. It's the A10 version, a 3.2 inch Android device, um, which was originally brought out on Android 1.6, but upgraded to 2.1. Uh, being in a Garmin uh, device, it's got uh, the GPS functionality built into it. it means it's not going to use your data. It's all uh, offline maps. Um, and also that it's got a car cradle that comes with the kit as well. So you can uh, throw this into your car, use it as your GPS. Uh, it was the so kind of first device on telecom anyway that uh, came out with that kind of functionality built in and uh, since then of course we've seen a number of devices like the LG P500 that uh, has also got that functionality now built in so um, just to take you around the device you've obviously got the speaker um, up the top here three capacitive buttons as opposed to four that we've seen on some devices we'll talk about the skinning there you'll see that that's quite a different sort of home screen um, to a number of devices devices. On the bottom there you've obviously got the uh, way of, uh, of taking the back off. Um, on this side, not quite sure exactly what that does uh, on the side there, but up the top is your volume rocker. Um, if you look on the back, you've got a 5 megapixel camera, no flash. Um, you've also got a speaker there as well. You've got a uh, micro USB plus you've got the car kit cradle uh, adapter plug there um, and on the top you've got the power button and also the three and a half mil jacks are kind of standard um, apart from that little um, docking um, area there uh, which you could understand uh, the need for that when you've, you've got a, a dock specifically designed for this device which is going to go in the car and that comes with the kit as well it's not an optional extra so um, just to take you through um, some of the skinning of the device, as I say, it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit different to what we've seen on, on most Android 2.1 um, devices. This really is um, quite a little bit different. When you take a look at this front screen, you'll see that um, the app drawer, rather than having um, something in the middle just to bring it up, you actually um, slide it up from the bottom. And you'll notice that um, all of the icons have been changed as well. Um, they look a little bit different. I think they really do look a little bit Windows 3.1 to be fair um, they aren't the greatest uh, looking however that um, could also be due to the fact that the resolution on the screen uh, isn't fantastic resolution uh, is 320 by 480 320 by 480 pixels um, is your resolution on uh, that screen so obviously not fantastic HSDPA so uh, it does that 7.2 but in terms of up uh, it only does up to 384 so that's sort of UTMS um, rather than any HS uh, UPA facility uh, inside of this phone. Um, obviously being on 2.1 it's going to be a little bit of a pain to tether uh, this device as well as opposed to 2.2 and beyond which have that uh, Wi-Fi tethering built into the operating system. Um, however uh, there are some uh, extra added features of this phone as opposed to your stock standard Android device and let's just find some of them now. So AA Ferry that's just a shortcut um, that takes you to the browser and the AA's uh, version of, of whether the ferries are running on time or not um, and that is New Zealand based so uh, that is fantastic. In terms of the clock um, basically everything in this is different to what you find on a normal Android phone um, so you've got the call functionality there where you can see um, you know which parts of the world are currently in darkness and which are currently in daytime so you know again it's it's kind of a little bit different um, but um, we're not we're not upset uh, by all this skinning. It just um, didn't seem uh, that it needed to happen. It hasn't uh, ruined the phone, I don't think. Uh, but as I say, it's kind of slightly different to what you'd find on most uh, other Android devices. So um, that is the weather widget there. And again, you know, it's different to all the other weather widgets that we've seen. Uh, but works perfectly well. Not unhappy with it. Um, also, one of the things that you're going to find here um, with the device as well is that it does have a 5 megapixel camera. Uh, with autofocus as well and that seems to work reasonably well um, if you want to record um, video on this you can do it um, you're going to find that it does 30 um, 30 frames per second but only at QVGA resolution so certainly you're not going to get any HD video even though it's got a 5 megapixel camera its process is very very slow um, I 
not quite sure how slow it is exactly um, but you know um, if your phone is lacking in lag you've probably given it to this one because uh, it is very very laggy but going between these home screens I don't know if you can see it there but it is taking an awful long time to go between these home screens um, being a 3.2 inch device as well um, if you're bringing up the on-screen keyboard um, Again, it just seems to take quite a wee while for this to actually do anything. So um, certainly not really all that impressed um, by um, its snappiness. In fact, it's it's definitely not a snappy device at all. Um, also, when you go into um, the offline maps, and you know Garmin do um, a pretty good job of their um, um, you know online maps, uh, sorry off offline maps, um, and it um, seems to to work okay. But you know compared to some of the things that we're now getting um, from um, some of these companies, this really does again look a little bit Windows 3.1. Um, it doesn't look um, very flash at all. It does seem to do multi touch. If we just um, do a little pinching to zoom there, you can see that it is actually zooming in, but again, you know, it's pretty laggy. And one of the things that also found with the Garmin software is that. Um, you know, this is a, a little thing that um, people do to try and be a bit smart. You know, they're adding in extra things, service stations and uh, where to get food. Well, here in Rotorua, you can get food on practically every corner. Um, so it just looks a little bit messy, really. Um, and the street names aren't as clear, I don't think, um, as really what they should be. Again, it's partly resolution of the device, but also it's uh, a fact that I think the software, um, you know, is a little bit old school um, in the way that it's been designed um, so you can get to that functionality as I say straight off the home screen um, you can just hit that and um, go straight into the Garmin software and then you're away and obviously the beauty in that uh, rather than using the Google navigation which is also available on this device is that you're not going to be using any data in that either as I say the shortcuts are here you can go straight to um, the telecom world here and when we do that um, it just takes you straight to the browser and again browser's been skinned as well and we're not hugely happy with that but um, uh, some of these companies seem intent on skinning everything and again look at that bounce back lag 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 going through the whole thing you know there's no flash on this it doesn't do flash um, but lag, 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 it's not hugely graphical site, this is the mobile version, so um, again, as I say, not really impressed with the performance of this device. It really is built as a, as a kind of GPS first um, and Android operating system second. So as a GPS system, we think it works fine um, in terms of uh, the Android phone side of things. There really are better devices out there um, at the price point which um, last time we saw was around the sort of six to $700 mark uh, for this device, which includes the car cradle as well. As well. Uh, but when you compare it to the likes of the P500, which has the same size screen, uh, but is on Android 2.2, um, we do think that uh, the P500 is, is certainly a, a better type of device. Um, all in all, that's pretty much uh, all I can show you because, uh, uh, as I say, it's, it's a stock standard kind of um, experience, um, although heavily skinned for um, the Garmin ASUS software. Um, the, the, the maps um, and navigation work just fine um, and uh, you know there'll be map updates I guess uh, that'll be given for a set period um, after this device goes off the shelves and then you're kind of on your own uh, but you do have the advantage of also being able to get into um, Google navigation um, if you need it as well so that is it the Garmin ASUS A10 um, it's, it's certainly a, an interesting device if you're after something with a cradle and um, something to do your, your sat nav in the car. Um, yes, you can you can do it with this device. However, there are other devices that are available, um, such as the P500, which are probably better suited and maybe uh, a better long-term experience. The Garmin Asus A10.